The Justice League is the most recognized DC Comics team-up, first appearing in 1960 in the Brave and the Bold issue number 28 created by writer Gardner Fox. It served as a revival to an earlier team conceived in the 40s, which we'll get in a minute. Consisting of Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman as the Trinity, Barry Allen or Rolly West, depending on which timeline you're reading, Aquaman, Martian Manhunter and Green Lantern, the Justice League have undergone several changes over the years by introducing and dropping members. Then we had the Justice League International spin-offs, where we saw new members from every corner of the earth being a brief member thanks to DC Comics buying out its competitor rival comics. And then came my favorite JLA era by Grant Morrison which featured Wally West as Flash and Kyle Rayner's Green Lantern replacing their originals because of the Crisis Timeline reboot. And believe it or not, this was the Justice League peak years. Other revamps came late in the years like the New 52. Yeah, let's forget that ever happened. The rebirth the Infinite Frontier and currently DC All In, all featuring new and returning members. On screen, the Justice League have appeared together in one live action movie released in 2021 directed by Zack Snyder. Also the Justice League Animated Series and Justice League Unlimited cartoons which ran in the 2000s alongside these others. The de facto leader of the group is Batman, who also finances a lot of the group's operations and keeps everyone in check with his contingency plans. Superman and Wonder Woman are the muscles and voices. The Flash and Green Lantern are the comedic duo who play important role in battles and Aquaman and Martian Manhunter are the ambassadors and spokespeople. Justice League biggest villains are easily Doomsday, the New Gods, Amazo and of course the Legion of Doom. First appearing in 1978 in the Challenge of the Super Friends written by Jeffrey Scott, this group of villains serve as direct response and counter to the Justice League. Lex Luthor and the cheap Superman clone Bizarro he made out of Superman's own DNA cells to counter him. Black Manta to counter Aquaman, Brainiac to also counter Superman, Captain Cold and Gorilla Grodd for the Flash, Cheetah for Wonder Woman, Sinister for Green Lantern and of course the Joker for Batman. Their headquarters is unironically called the Hall of Doom, you know, like the Hall of Justice. Unfortunately, throughout their existence, we have never actually gotten a real fixed origin story of how they came to exist and their operations. They mostly appear as extras in different stories. The most we know about them is Lex Luthor somehow managed to convince all of them to team up and they all agreed, I don't know. But recently, they've been heavily featured in stories like Death Metal Universe where they team up with the Batman Who Loves and the Harley Quinn TV show. Oh, come on, it's Lex Flippin Luthor. The Justice Society of America first appeared in 1940 by Gardner Fox in the All-Star Comics issue number 3. The original members were Dr. Fate, the Hourman, Spectra, Sunman, the Atom, the Flash, Jay Garrick that is, Green Lantern and Hawkman. Believe it or not, this was easily the first ever comic book hero team up, uniting key members of every comic into one team. The initial run was solid, unfortunately the comics lost team in the 40s after World War II and were dropped for a shiny new toy in the name of the Justice League. The mostly recognized leader was Hawkman and Dr. Fate served as the main muscle of the group. My favorite story about this team was the All-Star comics which released in the 70s that depicted them as old veterans who actually aged and were mentors to the younger generation and breed of new superheroes. The one unfortunate thing about this group is how DC Comics has never taken it seriously by giving it a writer to fully explore their stories. Because the Justice League overtook them in popularity in the 50s, they were relegated to seasonal appearance in one-shot comics and fan service stories. Hal Jordan was reabsorbed into the Justice League. Hawkman was dropped in favor of Hawkgirl in Justice League. Jay Garrick was swapped for The Flash and the rest barely made any appearances in years to follow. Well, at least Dr. Fate became his own thing appearing in many comics and games over the years. The most recent appearance of the JSA was in the Black Adam movie which unfortunately kinda of flopped and we may never see them again but overall the JSA is the most underrated team in the DC comics. The crime syndicate in America first appeared in 1964 created by Gardner Fox. This is an alternative timeline version of the Justice League superheroes existing in Earth 3 where everything is reversed from the current Earth that we live in. And by everything we mean America because once again everything in the whole world that's important happens in America like alien invasions, contact, imported events and you know I was being sarcastic by the way. So in this world Lex Luthor is a good guy and everything exists in a mirror dimension of Earth, literally everything, including how and where the body organs are located. How could you possibly know that? Your internal organs are reversed, your heart is on the wrong side. Its members include Ultraman for Superman, Old Man for Batman, Superman for Wonder Woman, Seeking for Aquaman, Johnny Quick for The Flash, and Powering for Green Lantern. I'm not gonna lie, I've never been a big fan of this story or this group in general, so I won't do the most justice by talking about them, but I recommend the Justice League Crisis on Two Earths and these comics, especially this one during and after the events of the Dark Side War. Also, in this world, Garab is now Blue Beetle, Greed is now Cyborg, and yeah, the Power Ring replaced all the Lantern Wielders. Speaking of Lanterns, our next team are the Lantern Ring Wielders in the DC Universe. 
Cops. There are about seven main lantern variants representing different emotions. The green lantern cops represent willpower. The sinestro cops are yellow lantern for fear. Red lanterns for rage. Orange for greed. Blue for hope. Indigo for compassion. And violent for love. However, in the sinestro cops and blackest night, we actually got two new colors of the spectrum. Black for death and white for life. I'm not gonna lie, the lanterns team up stories are easily my best because of how iconic these stories are. Especially the sinestro cops and blackest night run by Jeff Jones. The most famous well-known lanterns are of course. Hal Jordan, John Stewart, Kyle Renner and Guy Gardner for the Green Lanterns and Sinestro for the Yellow Lanterns. What kinda sucks about the lantern story is that even though they got the most compelling well written stories like when Hal Jordan was banished from the cops and stripped of his lantern powers but used his own willpower to forge a ring in the Emerald Knights, no live action or animated appearances ever do them any justice whatsoever. No one takes them seriously enough to write a compelling and meaningful script about this group. These are literally billion dollar movies just waiting to get explored and it's all up to Warner Brothers the dumbest studio on earth to do something about it like I don't know give us a game or a movie and not the numerous Batman spamming they've been doing over the years which brings us to the Bat family literally involves everyone associated to or walking alongside Batman to fight crime or anyone who knows Batman's identity most of the members have a Batman logo on their suits and have been a Robin at one point in their lives headed by Batman obviously Nightwing, Damian Wayne, Batwoman, Tim Drake, Batgirl and of course Red Hood however the later versions have depicted more members in the group with Huntress, Catwoman and Alfred's Pennyworth being the coordinator of the group. Here's the funny part. There is no official appearance of this group or an accredited comic book story about them. All we know as readers is that they know each other and over the years they came to work together and take up the official Gotham vigilantes across various stories like the Gotham Knights. But the one thing I like about this team up is the mutual respect for each other's spaces. They all acknowledge Batman as their leader and as for Pennyworth as their guardian. In my opinion, I think this is a low-key missed opportunity on this part to create their own self-contained universe in the Matt Reeves Batman universe while we all get the Robins separate movies and the team up in a one-off Batman movie where the Robins fight each other or alongside each other. The Doom Patrol is a relatively unpopular, unknown but extremely underrated DC Universe team consisting of Chief Niles Calder as their leader, Negative Man, Robot Man, Elastic Man and Crazy Jane as their main cast and sometimes Cyborg and Flex Mentalo. First appearing in an anthology comic book called My Greatest Adventures in 1963 by Arnold Drake. The story follows shun members of the society who come together and work for a guy in a wheelchair. And yes, let's address the elephant in the room. They awfully resist another superhero team also consisting of shunned members of the society working under the care of an old guy in a wheelchair except the Doom Patrol actually came before its copycat and Stan Lee did what Stan Lee does best steal people's ideas and claim it was him fuck you Stan Lee the one creator who actually put the Doom Patrol on the map is Grant Morrison in his iconic 90s run the Doom Patrol TV show is largely based off his work and the villains and stories that he created the Doom Patrol villains are easily one of the most unique in comic book history consisting of Red Jack a guy who thinks he's Jack the Reaper, the Brotherhood of Dada, an anarchist group who fight against the reality and reason. Here's the thing, just watch this show and thank me later, trust me, you will enjoy it. The New Gods, created by the legend Jack Kirby, first appearing in 1971 in New Gods Chapter 1. The story follows natives of two planets. New Genesis is ruled by High Father and Apocalypse ruled by Darkseid and are commonly referred to as Jack Kirby's fourth world. The law is pretty deep, so let me summarize most of it as quickly as I can. A billion years ago, a planet called God World inhabited by all gods, you know, Zeus, Athena, Neris and such was in a fierce battle and the remnants and after effects led to the creation and split of Godworld into two worlds, Apocalypse and New Genesis. Yuga Khan and Hegra gave birth to two sons, Isaiah and Yuxus. Yuxus or Darkseid had two wives but a shitload of baby mamas, his wife Joe gave birth to Kalibak, Tigra gave birth to Orion, Graven popped out of nowhere and Mirina Black gave birth to Grail. Isaiah or High Father married Becca and gave birth to Scott Free or Mr. Miracle and somewhere down the line, Metron who sits at the Mobius chair advocated for Darkseid and I father to swap their sons for peace truce. Other notable figures in Jacobi's fourth world are Steppenwolf, Desad, Desad. Decide. Granny Goodness who works for Darkseid and Big Birda who married Scott Free. Even though Jacobi's fourth world is the flesh and bones of the origin story of the new gods, many interpretations have been made over the years but my favorite remains to be the Justice League Darkseid War comic by Jeff Jones and it was an epic roller coaster to say the least. The Teen Titans are the most known sidekick lineup in all of fiction, consisting of Robin, Cyborg, Starfire, Raven and of course Beast Boy as the main team up cast. First appearing in Teen Titans 1965 under writer Bob Haney. Over the years 
because there have been many variants of the members of the Teen Titans portrayed across various media. The most noteworthy members include Kid Flash, Wonder Girl, Aqua Lord, and Hawk and Dove. The Titans are led by Nightwing and have a headquarters in Titan Tower with the most known villain being Deathstroke. However, when they aged out of their teen phase, they later came to be known as the Titans and some went ahead to join other groups like the Outsiders and Young Justice. Being a favorite among the fans, the Teen Titans have been featured heavily across various media like two animated series, a live action series, and a theatrical animated movie. As of right now, during the Rebirth era, there are canonically two variants of the Teen Titans. The original Teen Titans who aged out of their teenage years and became the Titans, consisting of Nightwing, Wally West, Arsenal, Donna Troy, Bumblebee, and Lilith, and the Teen Titans consisting of Damian Wayne, Wallace West, Aqualad, Beast Boy, Starfire and Raven. If you think that was confusing, wait till you see the Arkham Inmates. Like the Bat family, this is not an official publication with their own continuing comic lines. However, on many occasions, they have teamed up to work together to face Batman or wreak havoc in Gotham. The official members are easily everyone of Batman's rogue gallery, from Bane, Black Mask, Clayface, Calendar Man to the Joker, Riddler, Mr. Freeze and Deadshot. The one media we've seen them heavily featured is the Gotham TV show, you should seriously check this out, and that one episode of Batman the Animated Series. So for simplicity purpose, not an official crew, Mostly Gotham villains or Batman Rogues Gallery, but they team up regularly to cause havoc. Why so serious? The Dark Knights, created by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, and first appearing in Dark Days, the casting issue number 1, 2017, are a group of evil versions of the Justice League composed of evil alternate universe versions of Batman. All of the Batman originate from the Dark Multiverse, a plane made up of realities reflecting nightmares and dark desires. They serve Barbados, the god of the Dark Multiverse, supposedly responsible for the creation of Batman himself. Yeah, right. Each member of the first seven Dark Knights are a representation of Batman's worst fears and regrets and correlates to a member of the Justice League. The Batman who laughs represents Batman's fear of becoming as bad as the Joker. The drowned represents Batman's fear of going too far into the fight against superhumans and his love for Catwoman. The Dawnbreaker represents Batman's fear of how dangerous he will be with his superpowers but lacking his adult discipline. The Merciless represents Batman's fear of who he will be if he started killing. The Devastator represents Batman's fear of losing hope and his important friendship with Superman. The Murder Machine represents Batman's fear of his technological dependence to fight his worst enemies and the Red Death represents Batman's fear of losing members of the Bat family. Here's the funny part, despite the comic's popularity, they have never been adapted in any form of live action or animated format. Really hope James Gunn finds a spot for them cause they have a cult following and this is another billion dollar film just waiting to get made. Young Justice was formed in 1998 when DC's usual teen hero group, the Teen Titans, become adults and change their names to the Titans. Like the original Teen Titans, Young Justice was centered on three previously established teen heroes, Superboy, Robin and Impulse, created by Todd Noak. Later versions of the group saw members living and interacting with the adult titans creating the outsiders but the default most well known versions are Aqualad, Artemis and Miss Martian. Unlike the Teen Titans, the Young Justice is literally a group of random DC heroes who are underage not in any way have to be related to the Justice League. In most cases, it is a Superboy and Miss Martian centered show and their love affair but also has a lot on their teammates while there are too many reboots and comics floating around to pinpoint an exact origin story and lore to follow. I'd suggest you follow the Young Justice animated TV show, it's a pretty good show however at times it feels like a real really slow burn and it's a really big drug to get through. Next up is the Suicide Squad, officially known as Task Force X, led by Amanda Waller and featuring Deadshot, Harley Quinn, Killer Croc, King Shark and Captain Rick Flag. This team follows up a group of convicts from Arkham, Blackgate and Bell Reeves prison who made a deal with Amanda Waller to take out downright horrendous and fatal missions in exchange for their sentence reduction. And how does she keep them in check? Bomb implants at the back of their necks which explode should they go out of order. <laughs> The first version of the Suicide Squad debuted in The Brave and the Bold issue number 25 in September 1959. During the 2010s, out of nowhere, this group exploded in popularity and became a massive cult classic, appearing in two movies, one directed by David Ayer, hashtag release the air cut, and one by James Gunn. By the way, this James Gunn's version is arguably one of the greatest comic book movies of all time. Hell, I'll even put it at number two after The Dark Knight, seriously. They were also featured in their own recent fame, which was a massive stinker because Warner Brothers, the dumbest studio, decided to make a live service <laughs> decided to make it a live service
<laughs> I'm not making this up. This team doesn't have a constant fixed members since again, it's right there in the name. They are meant to die. But the most common ones are the ones I earlier mentioned and recently Bloodspot and Peacemaker. The Injustice League are a series of unrelated villains, counterparts to the Justice League. Lex Luthor has this idea to bring the villains together claiming it was a protection racket first but with the ultimate aim of dominating the world. There is very little comic story surrounding it as such. The main law of this group is centered on the Injustice Gods Among Us game and the Injustice 2 game. And here's the kicker. There's like 63 members of the Justice League. And I mean, come on, we seriously can't talk about all of them in a single minute. In summary, Joker drugs Superman with Scarecrow's poison and tricks him into killing Lois, Lois Lane who was pregnant. Superman gets angry and kills him and now it's the whole world against a Superman and they all team up both heroes and villains to win. The second chapter follows Brainiac who brainwashes a shitload of people and it's basically Batman's squad versus the hypnotized regime. Both of these games are good by the way, seriously, play them. And f now that's Finally, we got the League of Shadows. The League of Shadows was an ancient and powerful secret society whose stated purpose was to restore balance to the world by enacting purges at various points in history. They targeted places they deemed were the greatest sources of civilization's corruption. Come on, that's bullshit. I can't even continue with the whole goal. Just know there are a bunch of ninjas in a well-funded cult side by Raja Ghoul. Simple. Funny enough, Bruce Wayne saw this cult and was like, you know what, I'll train there. And that's how he became Batman. While in the League of Shadows, he met Talia Ghoul, who was to be the future leader, piped and they had Damien Wayne who later became Robin. Unlike Batman's no-kill policy, the League Mint's function was purging societies and brutal executions. However, in 2016, during the rebirth, the League of Assassins and the League of Shadows are two separate organizations. The League of Assassins consists of Rachel Ghoul's standard followers, while the League of Shadows is the most mysterious of the two and is often considered a myth, kind of like the Court of Owls. I don't know, maybe it's them. Most notable members of the League of Shadow are Rage, Talia his daughter, Ubu second in command of Rage, Damien Wayne, Lady Shiva, Bane, Oliver Queen, Cassandra Kane, who was once Batgirl at some point, and of course, Deathstroke. But if you're being honest, the League has a shitload of people who I can't mention in this video. And there you have it, guys. 15 DC teams, both villains and superheroes, and all are summarized in less than 20 minutes. 